IT Expo, Los Angeles, California, 2008. Hi, welcome again to IT Expo here at the LA Convention Center. Coming to you uh, from IT Expo West, I'm Eric Lenask, and I'm joined now by Jose Deras from AppTrigger. He is uh, the Vice President of Sales Engineering for AppTrigger. Welcome, Jose. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Um, AppTrigger, of course, uh, makes uh, an application session controller. Um, <coughs> You know, an application and application development, of course, uh, are amongst among the very hottest topics uh, that we're talking about here at IT Expo. Um, especially, there's uh, been a lot of hype around speedy or fast application deployment, um, and, and around the creation of sort of a, a, a reusable software layer, right? Right. Um, how is how is uh, AppTrigger helping uh, service providers address that demand? Right. Well, we, we spend quite a bit of time discussing this topic with service providers. Um, we don't spend um, a lot of time on the application itself, but primarily how do you actually connect the application to the network. The biggest issue that the service provider is going to face beyond creating the application is how to deploy it, and how do you deploy it across different types of networks. Uh, a lot has been talked about at how to create the application quickly, especially in SIP, and in the new generation networks and in IMS, but there's still a lot of TEM networks. So we have to be able to provide a way for the application to be delivered quickly across every single network while maintaining the same feature set. Hmm. One of the interesting things now, of course, is uh, with the evolution of what's going on with the internet, um, you know, we're seeing a whole lot of new, a whole stream of const a constant stream of uh, sticky applications, um, some consumer, some business oriented, uh, social networking, uh, content on demand types of things. Right. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on uh, on that? Well, I, I think that that's driving the um, further deployment of next generation networks and cool handsets, right, in applications. So that is important. We have to have that piece. But we also can't lose sight of the fact that all the revenue today is being delivered by voice, right, from voice applications. So while we roll out new next generation application or new next generation networks in IMS, we also have to make sure that all those voice uh, applications are ported over, and that's what we're spending our time with, right? The application session controller allows you to not only take those applications that are newly being developed and connect them to every network, but also reach back to your legacy applications and connect them to the IMS. What is that? What's stovepiping, and how does it get in the way of uh, speedy or efficient uh, application delivery? Well, so still piping is the traditional way of developing applications, right? And we've been fighting that for a long time. Um, in, you know, in the olden days, the application was delivered by the telecom equipment manufacturer. And he brought in the switches, the access, the CPE sometimes, but definitely the applications. The issue is that in still piping, the application is optimized for the network where it's going to reside. And then over the long term, as the service provider creates new networks, then they have to go back and create new applications for those networks. In essence, they're having to recreate what it's already existing for no additional revenue. So we need to find a way to get rid of the stove piping by putting a layer, a network layer, that allows you to reach into the application and connect it to new networks. Furthermore, you need to make sure that the applications being delivered going forward are not committing the sins of the past and not being stove piped. Okay, thank you. To what extent, and, and I guess also how quickly, uh, can today's new uh, purpose-built uh, networks um, provide a return on their investment for us, or the service provider uh, network environment? Right. So we've done quite a bit of work in uh, understanding you know, what the return on investment will be. Because if you're still piping those applications, specifically if you're having to go out there and recreate the, the application all over again, you have to do all the testing, you have to do the qualification, you have to bill, et cetera. So if you can find a way, again, to take some applications that are already connected and bring them to the new um, uh, subscribers, then your return on investment on the new network will be that much quicker. And we're seeing you know, up to half the savings right, in deploying those applications, and your return on investment is much shorter. We've heard uh, several people talk about uh how a lot of people's existing uh, fiscal models aren't necessarily efficient. Um, what would you say is a more reasonable or, or more effective uh, financial model? 
And uh, well, for us, it's all about you know how much revenue you're producing from the applications, right? It's the total application revenue per subscriber. At the end, that's the metric that you're looking for, because it doesn't matter you know what the, the application costs or how soon do you start start making money on it. But the real metric is per revenue. I'm looking at output, right? What's my average revenue per user? But then if you look at the next metric, per application, now you can get very granular and start understanding what applications really drive the customer behavior that you want. So there's some uh, obvious immediate impacts of uh, deploying, it, in your case, uh, uh, the application session controller. What, um, what kind of longer term impacts for service providers uh, do they provide? Well, so if you, if you look at the fact that stovepiping continues to happen in this market today, right? If we can educate the service provider to look at decoupling the application from the network and creating a reusable network layer, right, the ASC, then their applications will be quicker to market. They can realize that ROI quicker. Their total revenue per application will go up. And hopefully, they, it will allow them to innovate that much quicker because they don't have to think about how the application actually connects to the network and ultimately to who pays the bill, which is the subscriber. Fair enough. So uh, let's pull out the crystal ball here for a minute, um, and uh, let's assume that uh, all, if not well, all of the uh, tier one carriers uh, adopt some of these new strategies that you, you've been talking about. What does that do to the uh, application development environment? Well, uh, you know, from from my perspective, it should get a lot easier, right? Because the service creation environments and the SDPs and all the new innovation that's happening for application uh, creation uh, will accelerate. Uh, but we can't lose sight of the fact that the network itself will continue to evolve. So here we are today talking about SIP, VoIP, and IMS, but you know that there will be a new network. And in the wireless environment by itself, we're looking at new protocols for LTE as an example. So the network itself will continue to evolve, and this is something that we're not going to solve by just going to IMS. That's not the end goal. It will continue to evolve. Fantastic. Uh We've been talking with uh, Jose Deras of uh, App Trigger. Thanks for joining us today here at the IT Expo. And uh, once again, I think uh, Jose has made it clear to us that the applications are the future of uh, communications technology. Thank you. Thank you for having me.